moving on from from the early years then so uh, you left um Sheffield United the center of excellence at under 15 and then you go on into your professional club career so um you you join man city um so you join in uh, July 2016 um interested I, i'm just going to read out a couple of the bits so you signed your first pro contract in January 2018 you look at your your journey now or your career at City so far. So you've played 46 league games over five seasons, made seven uh, appearances in the Champions League, um, mm -hmm. one league winner's medal, two FA Cup winner's medals, two Conti Cup winner's medals. That's that's an impressive haul to have at such a young age um, with, with, a, with a lifetime ahead of you in terms of your career. So um, what was the... What was the beginning of the journey like? I suppose that um, that tra that transfer from being part time into a full time program, effectively. Yeah, it was massive. Um, it was, I, to be honest with you, my first week I was kind of like, "What on earth?" Like, obviously going onto a full time program compared to just really having to kick around on a Wednesday and a Friday was was massive um, and I'd only really had that professional structure like say in and around international youth age groups when you're on four-day camps or three-day camps and training twice a day which obviously isn't normal at Centre of Excellence so going into that um, was a massive shock um, physically everything really but I remember before I signed the girls were at the obviously played in the World Cup in Canada and that was kind of yeah huge huge thing in the progression of women's football to be honest it kind of put women's football on the map in my opinion so I remember going in visiting the city walking around the facilities were amazing yeah it straight away it was a no-brainer like there was there was never it was never really in question but I just remember going into my first session and it was obviously with KB and she just played at the World Cup yeah, yeah. Um, the girls were there Steph Lucy Lucy was pretty much a hero of that World Cup so going into that um was just I was so starstruck um which now is crazy to think because obviously I'm really good friends with them all but yeah, yeah. I, I was so nervous but I, I kind of had a perception of these people being like superstars but actually they they were just they're just normal people and they really welcomed me and helped me with, into the group so quick um it was really weird but I think from then on um obviously your relationships progress and what have you but I just remember that first first day I was so starstruck I was just like these are obviously what you sit and watch I used to wait up till 12 o'clock or whatever it was at midnight to watch to watch the girls playing in the World Cup yeah. and then actually then going in and being a part of their training and what have you was was weird and I remember actually a first session with Lucy everyone knows what Lucy's like she's a million miles an hour hardcore and we was doing Friday Raz and she was just like heading it off the line, clearing it off the line. <laughs> and I was just like, "This is this is mad." And just stood there, fifteen-year-old kid, no muscle, nothing, just <laughs> all over the place. It was crazy. But I think the realization then that kind of what it takes. You think I was pretty fortunate at Sheffield United. You go in and you think I'm doing all right here. I'm playing for the youth age groups in England, and then you go into that, and it's such a realization of how far you've got to get and how quickly you've got to yeah. improve because the standard it, the standard was so high um so i think from then on i got obviously the sports scientist got hold of me and couldn't walk for days weeks <laughs> i remember obviously back then it was a summer league um yeah. so it finished in i think it was october time it finished um and i just moved over there so i still had college over there so everyone else had gone off on the holidays thailand wherever at christmas and I just remember it was it was a sports scientist called Twads. All through that Christmas period, I was in at CFA doing squats with my little kettlebells <laughs> while everyone's on the beach on holiday. Yeah, it's been hard. It was, yeah, that's what I remember mainly about that season. But I think even now the physicality of the game has, has improved so much. So keeping up with that is, is difficult. It's, it sounds like um, there was some some incredible challenges in a good way in those early days. Obviously, stepping into a new environment and obviously understanding what the, I suppose, the social aspect of other players and getting to know your teammates. Mm -hmm. um, you you spoke about the physical impact, like the step up in level, and obviously what that then meant for you in terms of having to effectively play catch up 
Um, but still an, an important point in your age and your development, which actually is probably the natural place to be. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're probably trying, again, going back to the challenge we spoke about in the early years, you're, you're challenging yourself against older, more experienced players, um, trying to be the best that you can be in an environment. Sounds sounds like it was a, um, a real experience for you to have to go through um, in, in a good way in terms of uh, yeah. obviously looking how it's come out the other end. And, and so you've obviously had those challenges of walking into a new changing room, um, getting to know new players, understanding how they play, obviously the style of play at, an, at a new club. Um, understanding the goalkeeper coach, which we'll talk a, a little bit more about in a, in a while, um, and obviously a new manager. Um, what other challenges did you face? Obviously, you'd, you'd lived in Sheffield and obviously you, you've had to then travel across. Um, am I right in saying you was in digs during that first period as well? Yeah, so initially when I signed, I still had a year of, of school to finish um, my GCSEs. So that was pretty much my first season. Um, I was going across on a Monday night Chris used to take me um for an hour um doing just one-to-one -one bits um, yep. that I'd missed out in the weeks so obviously I couldn't train through the day uh, most of the time unless it was school holidays then on a Wednesday I had day release from school and then on a Friday night I used to do the same and then I used to play for the reserves on a weekend and that was kind of the first six months it, it was quite difficult obviously to, to kind of get get into a routine my dad was driving me over every night there and back I was getting up getting up for school yeah, doing the yeah. same getting in the car and going um which was quite challenging at first and then I was lucky enough that they put me up in digs after I'd done my GCSEs and I went to college which is literally just pretty much on site um, at the academy which is pretty fortunate um but I remember moving into digs and I must admit like it was tough because here I was such like we're such a big family my yeah, friends yeah. obviously all my school friends are then going to college together and you're kind of kind of missing them experiences really um but so I, I found it challenging and obviously I used to try and come home as much as I could I was getting the train there and back sometimes just just to yeah, go home because yeah. um, it is difficult you're on your own um my digs were pretty far out of the center so there weren't really many trams and I used to get a taxi into training every day, taxi back from training every day. So you kind of just in that bubble. Um, and obviously around that I had college, so I'd do training and stay at college till four, go home. Same thing every day, really. But I think it was tough. At first when I moved in, I actually moved in with George Stanway, which was class. Yeah. For the first three months, it was it was just us two. And then Georgia signed her pro. Um, and then once you sign your pro, you kind of go on do your own thing and she moved in with yeah. Izzy yeah. um so I, I kind of had a year without her really um so that was tough it was challenging um obviously moving away from home was was hard um it's not a million miles away and all the girls say to me can't be saying you was home all the time anyway because I just <laughs> used to I used to get the train after training and just go home but that was that was tough um and then obviously when you go on to sign your pro, I moved in with Georgia and Izzy, and that was class. I was I was living the dream. That yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Such a change because you kind of go, and although you do move away from home, in digs you are still kind of mummied, and you get yeah, your tea cooked. Got the for support you. around you. Yeah. yeah, you get your tea cooked for you. They wash your clothes. You do that, and then when I went to Izzy's, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so they had to teach me how to do the washing and everything like that because I have to be honest I've always been mummied um I'm home now in this period I've been home for 10 weeks and I've had my tea on the table every night so I'm loving it you but, won't want to go back yeah exactly but I think then you get to that age and you kind of realize you've got to sort myself out here so yeah you learn them them different type of things because you kind of just live in the dream playing football every day not doing coming home your washing's done yeah we get our kit washed at city it's like something you never believe um so yeah yeah I think I then suppose... I suppose like, it's, it, it sounds like it's a, it was a real chaotic period for you where you was obviously yeah. trying to settle in, but then you have all these other things going on. And that's, again, it's probably the the, the, the realistic environment that any professional mm -hmm. footballer is walking into nowadays, especially if they're um, moving clubs or, or country or, or whatever that may be. They're going to have to come up against all these chaotic situations. How, how long would you say it took you to probably settle in and, and bed in? I think... I'd still, I'd still say a while. Like obviously, I did my digs, and then probably a couple after that, a couple of months, then moving into Izzy's, where I'd left 
college then at that point. So I could really yeah. just start to focus on being a full-time professional footballer. Whereas I think for the first two years, there was so much else going on. Like one week I was traveling with the first team, the next week I was playing for the reserves. Um, I had school. Sometimes school won't let me go and train because I had exams. So it's kind of broken. Um, mm. But I think, so then the first few months after I'd finished college, um, just really being able to just focus. Um, and a lot of people obviously say, why don't you do uni? Why don't you do that? But for me, I just purely wanted to focus on kind of just getting getting a bit of consistency within it. And yeah. I think I've found that now. Um, and obviously it helps when you start playing and you start, your focus kind of changes. Whereas before my focus was more, I need to really develop to even get near any standard. Whereas now it's like the challenges that how do I get better? Whereas I yeah. wasn't even near that phase of getting better it was more just getting them foundations um so I think I'd say it probably took me to 2017 2018 to really feel like I had a routine yeah um, which which was tough and then in terms of season probably this se- last season this season was the, the really the only time where I felt like I'd got a bit of consistency yeah more yeah. lifestyle everything really uh, and I suppose you mentioned it there, obviously, all these things that we've spoken about so far really are on the, are not necessarily about the football, but more about the external things are going. And I suppose yeah. the, the point when it becomes really real is that moment you, you first then make your, your step over the white line for the senior team. So what, what, tell us a bit about that. When was it? Um, how did you cope with it? How did you deal with it? Yeah, so it was October of 2016. Um <laughs> so it was a season where City they'd gone unbeaten and KB had not conceded a goal from open play so and then the last game of the season I get subbed on for the last 20 and I'm thinking I I, I didn't even think about it being my debut I just thought I can't let a goal in here because KB's gone the whole <laughs> season not let no a goal pressure. in from open play so every time the ball came near me I just booed it as far as I could because I just thought just get it like there was no playing style nothing to it I was just like just get this ball away from me, really, because I was like, this can't be happening in the last 20 minutes. Imagine. I was like, yeah. KB will hate me forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was my main thought, to be honest. Um, and it was the day we won. We won the league that day. So it was it was a good occasion all around, really. Um, I got my yeah. first few minutes and then obviously the girls had, had won the league, which was pretty special for them. Yeah. And and obviously, as we've we've sort of spoke about at the start, is your, your, your club... Um, I suppose achievements so far are, are impressive. Can you can you pinpoint some of the key moments through your club career so far that you've experienced? Obviously, you, you've had FA Cup games, you've had um, obviously uh, season-defining uh, league games. Um, what's been some standout moments for you so far? Yeah, I think my first kind of feeling of not of pressure, but a big game scenario. Obviously, we played Chelsea and. Phil had just been appointed as the England manager and to be honest I was on the bench for the game and I just remember sat sat next to it was Claire Claire Emsley and we were just chatting away on the bench everything was going fine the game was good then KB just flies out gets injured and I was you kind of don't realize you just sat there like and then Chris is like go and get warm and you don't realize it's you that, that obviously is has got to go on in this situation and um she got stretched off luckily she was all right after that but that was like 30 minutes in and I just remember that was my first obviously that was Chelsea City is always a massive game and it's usually a title decider in many ways um so I remember going on and it was all a bit chaotic just getting on getting ready um but I think probably that probably helped me that I wasn't that prepared you can just get thrown into it and you don't yeah, have to yeah. think about it, you just do it. Um, and I think that really, really helped me. And we managed to keep that game nil-nil. Don't know how so many things happened in that game. We ended up playing with three at the back. Steph went off with a head injury. It was just like chaos. And I don't know how we managed to get through it. But that was one of the games where you after you think that was that was pretty heavy. So I think that was probably one of my standout games. Um, I think as well, playing in the Champions League, whoever you play is obviously a big occasion yeah um, sure. they're all good opponents and we've had some really good clashes with Atletico Madrid 
Um, I think they're always a tough game. Not necessarily. Uh, to be fair, I think they are our bogey team, but um, it always brings out a good game. So um, any game like that, really, with a lot of pressure on. Um, yeah. I remember playing in the Conny Cup final against Arsenal. We lost 1-0. Um, and I just remember after that, I was thinking, because obviously we've won all their medals of, at my time at City, but I've never actually played in any of the finals. So I remember thinking, this this feeling. So yeah, hopefully yeah. now, whenever we get the chance now to play in a final, I remember that feeling and it's not really one I want again. So I would say I've won all them medals, but I am still waiting to kind of, as you're a part of a team, but to play in a final at Wembley or to play in the Connie Cup final in front of the fans, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something I'm still waiting for and not working towards, to be honest. Um, something I really want to achieve. Yeah, brilliant. And and uh, just going back on one of your, your earlier points there around, and I suppose this is going to be quite a um, a common occurrence for a lot of goalkeepers when they're first starting their careers mm-hmm. is sometimes you get your first exposure to a game where you get put on a pitch when you least expect it. Um, yeah. And obviously you've spoken there about perhaps not having to think about it as being a key sort of recipe for making that, that first introduction of success. Um, what other things do you felt uh, or do you feel like you you'd you'd had to do to prepare yourself to be able to step and perform at those moments? Yeah, I think obviously at that moment, um, obviously I was on the bench, um, and I think week in week out, obviously training with KB yourself. Yeah, you kind of you have to work hard. You have to kind of be at the level and push the standard because she was setting the standard, and you've kind of just got to push as hard as you can to get near that um so I think in training we obviously prepared we do match-based scenarios and things like that always so I think you are always ready and the preparation is the same as whether you're on the bench or or you're the starting keeper and I think from day one me and KB have always pushed each other no matter who's playing yeah, yeah. so in that scenario even though I was a young kid she she demanded standards uh, yeah. whether that's you serving whether that's you in goal, like you always have to kind of have them standards. So I think that kind of set me nicely. And I guess you kind of, I didn't really have to think about it. So it, it was kind of as it come. And I guess when you get your first touch, it's like anything else, really, you're just in the game. And as the game goes by, that's that's all you think about. You don't really think about anything else. You just kind of yeah. think about keeping the ball out of the net. Um, so I think we do all them preparations. And like I say, I've trained with Chris and KB for a long time up to that point. So yeah. Um, I'd had the best preparation I, I could at that time. Uh, and you've mentioned obviously KB a few times there. Obviously, you you walked in the building and uh, after seeing her on the world stage yeah. um, in the World Cup, what what sort of impact um, did KB have on you in terms of your mindset to training, your mindset to performing? Um, what effects and impacts did she have on you in your in, in your time so far with KB? Yeah, KB obviously from the moment to be honest, I joined City. She took me under a wing. Um, and in everything really, off the pitch, on the pitch, made sure I was all right, supported me. Um, and that was nice to have. Um, we have a good relationship. Obviously, as time progresses, it like you want to play, both yeah, of you yeah, want to yeah. play. Comes competition. Um, yeah, competition. Um, but I'd, I'd say from the start, it wasn't it wasn't really like that. Because obviously, I'd come in, I was kind of wowed. She was unbelievable. Probably the well, the best keeper I'd seen close up training, she was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I just remember watching her in training and thinking, like, how does that happen? Um, yeah. Like a spring of power. Um, she was incredible. But I think she took the time out to really, like, talk me through things. Obviously, training, it, when it was just me and her training for a while. And I can imagine for her, it, could have, it potentially could have been quite frustrating having a young kid who didn't have much experience, maybe wasn't at the standard, that could be quite frustrating, but she didn't really let that show or anything like that. And she talked me through quite a lot of things, give me help, tips, um, just really patient. And I think that helped me a lot. Um, and then obviously as time progressed, you you progress physically, you get better. Um, and I think now we have a really good relationship where we just push, try and push each other day in, day out. Obviously she has areas where I still really want to be at so I can I still learn so much off her um, and I think that'll always happen because she's a great keeper so I think there's always areas where you can look and think how how did you do that 
yeah, yeah. and I think now it's nice that we have a relationship where she asks me questions as well so it's not always me asking KB um, so I don't feel like I'm annoying her but now she's been class um, brilliant person on and off the pitch as you know yeah yeah um, so she's always been the support and, and she's fun to train with to be honest she's she's like a big kid herself sometimes yeah. so um it's nice it's, it's chilled so yeah we have a yeah. good relationship uh, and i suppose that's like the, the perfect picture for a goalkeeper coach or a manager in terms mm-hmm. of how their goal their goalkeeping group looks that they've, they have got certainly goalkeepers that that help each other that support each other that challenge each other um, but are still competitive at the end of it because ultimately it is, it is a sport where there's only one goalkeeping position on the pitch, and um, it, I, I suppose your your scenario or environment has has been is, is a great one where you've you've had that opportunity to um, to develop with 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 arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, so, so I think that's great that you've had that opportunity to have someone like KB around you, uh, and, and obviously you've mentioned Chris there as well, Chris Williams, obviously your goalkeeper coach. Um, he's been with you from the start at City. What, mm-hmm. what sort, what sort of impact has uh, has Chris had on you? Um, what sort of areas has he helped you develop uh, and and helped to push you in in terms of your journey so far? Yeah, he's been class from day one. Um, obviously, he's pushed me so much. Um, I think bringing me in as a young kid. Obviously, he saw something that I don't know what, but he clearly saw something. Um, like I say, on the Monday nights, he used to take time out of his week. When he was, I mean, he coaches the boys, he coaches the girls. So yep. for him to take that time out um, and kind of help me progress. Because I think without them sessions, I'd have missed out on a lot and probably not be as advanced in some areas as, as I am now. Um, but I think just, like I say, KB has, has patience, but Chris's patience is class as well. Um, yeah. I think as a goalkeeper coach, he's very technical. Um very much game related scenarios um and situational really um and yeah. i think that was a lot it's a lot different to what i've experienced previous so obviously a center of excellence i used to do were like a lot of going through cones step dive not really like anything within the goal or anything challenging as in a strike it was more like a throw serve or a volley serve yeah. so i think the differences of that was was massive obviously coming in um and getting into the swing of things of having a man striking a ball at you was was quite difficult yeah. at the start but like like I say he's, he's really patient and he's kind of step by step added his added his styles um obviously me and KB working together Karima as well at the minute we're all very different goalkeepers so I think for him he's added a lot of things in individually which has helped us all because obviously we're not all the same um Whereas one thing might work for me, it might not work for KB. So he kind of gives us all the chance to experience it, go through it. Yeah. Um, and then obviously see which suits. Uh, and I think as well, having that honest relationship can kind of take that on the chin. So I think having that, whereas you don't really want someone who's always going, that's brilliant, that's great. Um, I think having them on honest conversations, sitting down, going through games um, and just being able to be like, even me challenging him, I think that's a, that's a good relationship. Yeah, yeah, for sure me being able to say I don't, I don't agree with that I don't think that works um I think we have that relationship down to a T really um yeah. nice and open and honest and I think he's obviously given me that exposure to play first team football and them opportunities alongside Nick uh, obviously who's the manager but they've both been really patient and had a lot of trust in my ability which is nice to obviously have that um Absolutely. so I think from that point of view he's been probably the biggest influencer yeah. today to be honest and obviously working day in day out with him it's been class for me for sure and it sounds like you again going back to that network you've got around you it's great to have that on 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 pitch support in the sense of I suppose KB with her experience and then you've got Chris from the other side as well as all the other staff you've got around mm-hmm. you so, um, it sounds like you've got a fantastic support network so if if you was to give one bit of advice to uh, a young goalkeeper starting off their journey based on what you've experienced so far um what 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 would that advice be i'd probably say not not to think of anything as too big of a challenge for example like when i first joined city the difference and the step up is huge but kind of not to be phased by that and know that everyone's been through that process so steph at some point kb at some point will have had to think I've gone into that environment and have thought, wow, this is this is a different level. So I think 
not kind of being overwhelmed by that because it, it can easily happen and kind of think that it's unachievable when when it's not really yeah so so accepting challenge and not being afraid yeah. of it yeah yeah, yeah definitely uh, that's a, that's a really key message